not come. So this is a way to bridge all those gaps. It's an excellent thing, excellent initiative. Thank you, madam. It's an ARC, just a, a webinar means everyone's thought process, all of us thought, sat together, all the ARC team and what we should do mm. differently for our younger generation. No, no, it is yes. a good thing. And I'm, uh, by the way, I'm the ARC chairman for my state. And I was yes. just thinking to adopt this kind of a thing in my state also, uh, by way of it, something similar or something uh, different. Just... Uh, we'll be live in 30 seconds. Thanks. Okay, okay. Yes. Now we'll be, yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I joined Welcome, me. Madam Kasturi, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Dr. Modini. Hi, Dr. Kasturi. Hello. So nice. Doing so well. Yeah, Dr. good evening. Sorry, I'm mm -hmm. not showing my face. Still in OT. <laughs> okay. okay. We are going live in a short while. Please maintain uh, silence for a while. Are we ready? We are live, sir. Okay. Good evening, students, and welcome to this ninth episode of All India Postgraduate Teaching Program, which is a new initiative from ARC AIOS. This is a PG program with difference, which trains to which aims to cover the uncovered aspects of teaching program like case presentations, journal clubs, OSCEs, and didactics on topics which are not comprehensively available at a single point in a textbook. So here we present our ninth episode of the series. Today, the long case would be presented by Dr. Johi Gupta, who is a second year resident from RIO, Kolkata. I'm extremely thankful to the mentors, Dr. Asim Ghosh, sir, who is a professor, director and HOD of RIO Medical College and Hospital, Kolkata. And she's ably also mentored by Dr. Salul Kumar Mandal, who is a professor in the Department of Orbit, Oculoplasty and Recurrent Statue Surgery at RIO Medical College and Hospital, Kolkata. My special thanks goes to the examiners of the externals. They are Dr. Nagaraju, sir, who is Professor and H HOD, Minto Ophthalmic Hospital, Bangalore. Dr. Modini Pandarpurukar, ma'am, who is Professor and Head of the Department of Osmania Medical College and Deputy Superintendent of SD Hospital, that is Sarojini Devi I Hospital and RIO Hyderabad. And also we have the third examiner. He is Dr. Rajendra Maurya, a dear friend of mine, who is also an assistant professor and in charge of ocular oncology, Tom and Orbit Services at prestigious RIO, that is at uh, RIO Banaras in the University of Varanasi. Students, and for the uh, sake of the viewers, we have a great following till date. We almost get a following of almost more than no, 2,000 to 3,000 students every year, every for every episode. Now, I would request uh, Dr. Juhi Gupta to share her screen without much ado and start presenting her case. Remember, Dr. Juhi, it is going to be a, just a friendly learning from each one of, for each one of us. The examiners, externals are going to be not, uh, don't worry, they are not going to be, they will be teaching you while they are asking you the question. We also have Dr. Kasturi as well as Dr. Deepak, our own ARC members who today who have joined in, who will be also with the part of the discussions as well as other ARC members who log in and have the interest in the speciality. So over to you, Dr. Juhi. I welcome you for this presentation. Thank you, sir, so much for the introduction. I'm sorry, one minute. Uh, I see Dr. Asim Kumar Ghosh, sir. I'm extremely obliged and thankful, Professor Ghosh, sir, for finding time for our students, young students. I know how busy you are, but my heartfelt thanks for it. And now let's move ahead with the program. We'll have a chat later. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everybody, respected teachers and honorable chairpersons. Today, I am going to present a case on proptosis. Proptosis is abnormal forward protrusion of one or both eyeballs with respect to the orbit, defined as protrusion of more than 21 mm beyond orbital rim and asymmetry of more than 2 mm between the eyes. He is a 46 years old male who is driver by occupation and resident of West Bengal, came to our, our OPD with complaint of swelling and outward protrusion of eyeball for two years. It was associated with pain and watering in left eye for six months. The patient was asymptomatic till two years. 
when he noticed prominence of left eye which was insidious in onset and progressive in nature he then visited a local physician and was prescribed eye drops and relieved symptomatically but after few days there he noticed swelling of left eye which was associated with pain and mild redness the pain was dull looking mostly of a retro or vital nature and as described by the the patient as something pushing forward from the eye the pain was non radiating and present both at rest and eye movements there was no history of tremor palpitations or neck swelling no history of diplopia no history of trauma no history of any postural variation or variation with sneezing or coughing there was no history of any fever headache photophobia or discharge and there was no history of exposure to radio or chemotherapy history of past illness no significant history of diabetes or hypertension or any cardiac illness no past history of any ocular surgery personal history patient was a tobacco ingestion and his bowel and bladder movement was within normal limit no history of any drug allergy family history not significant on general examination the patient was alert conscious cooperative oriented to time place and person his vitals were stable and no features of pallor ricterus sinusitis clubbing edema no palpable any neck gland and lymph nodes on systemic examination all the systems were within normal limit the patient visited us with a vision of 6 by 9 in right eye and 6 by 60 in the left eye which was not improving with glasses on color vision test by isochromatic plates of ishihara he could not read any plates by his left eye on extraocular movement examination it was full and free in all directions of gaze in right eye but it was restricted in all directions of gaze in the left eye on ocular adnexia examination was within normal limit in the right eye but showed eyelid fullness and lack of thalamus in the left eye on sharma's test 5 minutes reading on watman's filter showed 15 mm reading in right eye but 12 mm in left eye suggesting mild dry eye intraocular pressure was measured by non contact tonometer and the reading was 16 mm in the right eye and 20 mm in the left eye next anterior segment examination conjunctiva was normal in the right eye but perilimbal congestion both on the nasal and the temporal side was seen in the left eye cornea showed exposure keratopathy anterior chamber depth was normal and contents were clear iris the color was dark brown and normal iris pattern pupillary reaction was relatively afferent pupillary defect in the left eye and lens was ns grade 1 in both eyes on examination the head posture was normal facial asymmetry present nocular examination inspection unilateral protrusion of the left eye non axial proptosis direction down and laterally outwards on worms view proptosis was noted eye brows on both side were normal increased palpable fissure height that is right eye it measured 10 mm and on left eye 17 mm no periorbital signs of inflammation mild lack of thalamus present wall salva was negative and the non pulsatile and there was no evidence of any engorged vessels um uh, joey can i stop you for a minute yes yes ma'am i wanted to know if there were any nasal symptoms or sinus symptoms uh, to the in the patient you just said sneezing and coughing but you no, did yes. not a nasal block or uh, difficulty yes, in breathing through that nostril no ma'am there was no symptoms of any nasal okay. block or any so do you think it is relevant yes ma'am mainly okay ma'am go ahead go ahead you are doing a good job okay ma'am these are the nine cardinal positions In, a, in the primary position in elevation depression levo elevation levo version levo depression more on dextro elevation dextro version on dextro depression joey can you just go back to it and show it to the students every positions so this is the center picture is the primary position this is the elevation this is the depression on the right side this is levo elevation this is levo version and the, this is levo depression these images dextro elevation dextro version and dextro depression um uh, joey i want to ask you another question here in this case uh, do you think versions are uh, more significant or ductions um ductions because uh, unilateral there is muscle restriction okay yeah so here you are showing a picture of versions Both so I, yes ma'am okay you have another picture for ductions 
Um, Dakshan, only one single picture I have taken in the first okay. first slide which I have shown. All right, all right. Please go ahead. So, okay. movement was uh, restricted in all the direction, Jui? Yes, sir. Particular direction. No, sir. All the directions. Yeah, she it said is showing. all the. She said all the directions. But when you are showing versions, uh, depression is seeming they are present and quite all right to me in the pictures. Depression is seeming all right. Abduction is seeming all right to me here. A bit restricted, but still present in the yes, picture. Sir. More on the, these uh, right when the patient is looking rightwards, these were more. But there was movement restriction in all the gazes. It should be more restricted on the superior medial, I think. Yes, sir. Your mask is downward and out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Mask, lies in superior medial compartment. Yes, sir. And as uh, well asked by Dr. Munni, that is there any association with the rhinitis or uh, nasal stuffing? Nasal. Because the uh, most common uh, neighboring structure is ethmoidal sinus. Yes, sir. Mucosis. Yes, sir. Yeah. On so, I think uh, your ductions are uh, more important for the simple reason that uh, we want to know how the pathology affecting the orbit is affecting the ocular movements yes. of that particular eye, rather yes. than how the whether both eyes are working in tandem. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. And Dr. Juhi, when you examining the patient's extracular movements, simultaneously you should uh, measure the retropulsion, whether it is a foam, whether it is soft, or whether it is a hard. Because that uh, indicate about the um, crowd, overcrowding over the optic um, orbital apex or there some mass lesion at the orbital apex that can give you the feeling. Okay. Yes, sir. So and palpation I have done. Test? You so force duction? Uh, no, sir. I didn't do do the force duction test. Okay. 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 Proceed. Proceed. So on palpation, retropulsion test, firm consistency, pulsation was absent. The swelling was non-tender, temperature normal, regional lymph nodes were absent. On orbital rim palpation, there was no bony erosion or any mass. One more, uh, one more small correction, Juhi, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, regional lymph nodes will be present, but not palpable. You cannot say absent. Oh, okay, ma'am, palpable, yes. I ma mean, no I one has removed them, no? If you say absent, it carries a different meaning. Yes, we have not to palpable. be very careful in choosing all our words. I know English is not none of our mother tongues, but the meaning carried might be different because your generation has a global platform. It does not have a national or a local platform at all. So you would you can say not palpable instead of saying absent totally. Okay, ma'am. On sensory a sensation was equal on both the sides. On auscultation, no brew heart. Juhi, I want to interrupt you. While the, on palpation, you should examine not only the orbital rim, whether finger can be insinuated or not. And I think you will get the difficulty in finger insinuation. Finger insinuation. In the medial compartment because mass lies there. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. You so must on palpation of the orbital rim, I palpated uh, that no, there was no bony erosion and the mass was palpated with the finger insinuation test also. And you, but you the margin to, was free. You have to describe the mass also on palpation, whether it is a soft, well defined, tender, non tender. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Describe. Yeah, um, palpation. See, in this case, your mass uh, was it? There was was there a mass in the orbit? Could you palpate in the anterior orbit any mass? Ma'am, yeah. diffusely diffused. The mass was diffused. Not margin was not well defined and form consistency. Where but was the it? Ma'am, in the superior medial, not no, sir, non pulsed, non pulsed type. In the superior medial quadrant. medial quadrant, yes, ma'am. And uh, was it separate from the orbital rim? Was yes, ma'am. It, it was. It was separated. Ma'am, bony rim was not involved. It was separate no, from mass, the bony rim. mass. Whether mass is uh, arising uh, from the orbital rim or not, that is what sir, no, sir has asked no, you already. Doctor Deepak has asked you whether you could insinuate your fingers between yes, the mass and the. Please listen carefully. Between the mass and between the bony rim of the superior nasal orbit, could you pass your fingers? Could you identify the mass as separate from the orbital rim? Yes, ma'am. Mass was separate from the separate. orbital rim, and it was bony hard. Firm very consistency, okay. not bony. Firm. Okay, firm to firm, firm consistency. Okay, very interesting. How was the surface of the mass, Juhi? Um, it was diffuse and smooth. Are you coming to it in the later slide? Am I jumping the gun by asking you already? <laughs> yes, so next we have more pictures. Okay, go on, go on. Please go on. Let us hear you, then we can ask. Please go on. 
proptosis was measured by Hertel's exophthalmometer, which showed reading of 16 millimeter in right eye and in left eye it showed 30 millimeter. Dystopia, me dystopia measurement was done, which showed lateral displacement of 5 millimeter and downward displacement of 10 millimeter. Okay. Field analysis by Humphreys field analyzer on 24 2 showed a global uh, Dr. field Jee, effect. Yes, sir. So if I can interrupt, actually, basically in uh, the South, now what we do when you assess a postgraduate, before you come to the investigations, you should make a clinical diagnosis. Then afterwards, you can go back to this uh, investigation, these fields and other things. Okay, okay. So now we can uh -huh. go, go back next slide, uh, previous slide. Yes. Please. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there is a circumciliary congestion also. Yes. yes. You have to describe about the fluorescein staining, corneal sensation, and uh, there may be something reason. Okay. Sir, Maybe yes. Sir. Because of exposure keratopathy, patient may have some corneal uh, erosion. I sir, uh, exposure keratopathy, I have seen. And Sharma cited. Okay, in, on fluorescein stain? Fluorescein stain, sir, I didn't do that. When you have exposure keratopathy, it is mandatory to do the fluorescein stain, am I right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, you have not told us anything about a mass anywhere, Juhi, about how many mm you felt or what? Did you just feel a boggy fullness? Or what did you feel? I'm, I mean, you have come directly to the fields and other investigations, or is it coming later, your description of the mass? So, ma'am, I'm describing it in the radiologically. I have seen no. that mass. You just, just no, no. Are you, did you not describe your differential diagnosis. Like uh, Dr. Nagarajo was saying, you must finish the clinical examination first before you go on to imaging and other yes. investigations. Yes, I agree with you. Yes, Dr. Juhi. Uh, in your presentation, it was around a 40, 45 year old male who presented with history of protrusion of the left eye for the past two years with probably symptoms of pain after six months. No, right? right? But yes, uh, sir. Uh, yeah, in the symptoms, you didn't mention anything about the, you can just go back to the slides and see, you didn't mention anything about the defective vision at all. Yes. That is one thing which uh, was uh, very important. Uh, important. Okay. So the patient presented with history of uh, protrusion of the left eye with uh, pain, which started six months later. And uh, you should have mentioned the uh, defective part of the defective vision part of it. Yes. Just elaborate on the decreased vision if the patient was complaining of anything like that. Yes, the patient was actually more concerned with the pain and the swelling, and he also complained no. of diminution no. of vision. No, but you didn't mention. Can you just elaborate on that? decreased vision is it important Proctor yes sir of, yes sir vision. yeah uh, because uh, it may be due to optic nerve compression in my case it was due to optic nerve compression and also there no, no, was no, exposure no, keratopathy no, no no you cannot go directly like that optic nerve compression you go back to the first uh, i think third or fourth slide there yeah next next slide next slide see here you have, one thing is you have mentioned about the process second you told there is mild redness and pain but on clinical examination, we saw a lot of redness actually. Yes, and, and pain, all around. Yeah, all around. And pain, you told it is a non radiating, probably it is a dull aching pain, probably yes, a circular moment. Nowhere, see, now you have written there is no history of diplopia. You yes, cannot sir. comment on diplopia when there is no mention about the vision part of it. So, you, okay, see, vision is very important. Okay, can you just elaborate on the decrease in the vision, whether the vision was decreased at the onset, that is two years back, or, or was, was it uh, progressive in nature, or did, in, it start, or did it start six months later when the pain started? Sir, decrease in vision was not from the initial, it progressed yeah. with the swelling, and yeah. with, uh, uh, after six months since he had aggravated symptoms, with that also vision also decreased, yeah. aggravated, means aggravated. What was the radiative afferent pupillary defect, Dr. Juhi? RAPD was present? Yes, sir. RPT was yes, present sir. in the and left eye. vision also hampered. Yes, sir. Colored okay. vision On the basis hampered. of that, you are saying that it is the optic nerve. Compression is there. Features of, yes, sir. Um, but uh, you also mentioned immature cataract. Yes, ma'am. Uh, cataract Can that account uh, for a dis dis I mean, difference in the color vision and the difference in the vision? Not as so much for the color vision or... Uh, other. If it is a nuclear type, sometimes it does absorb particular rays. You do get a difference in the color perceptions. Yes, ma'am. Right. Sometimes you do get, may not be the typical red, green, I agree. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Dr. Jui, the common presentation of uh, uh, RAPD, presence of RAPD and color vision defect 
is more common with axial proptosis when the tumor is arising from nearby the uh, optic nerve seat or you can say optic foramen but yes, your sir. mass lesion is in superior medial quadrant which yes, could be sir. either uh, with mucosal or maybe osteoma fibroma but uh, if it is a very huge size then only can affect the optic nerve yes sir uh, it is a mass effect i also did not understand one more point you talked about sensation in one of your slide i am not very clear about what sensation you are talking yeah. or sensory symptoms uh, please go on to the uh, next slide next slide i just wanted to yes. ask you that then um yeah sensory yeah, yeah. sensation i mean what of what of the cornea of the forehead of the of forehead the, then uh, do you think it is uh, necessary to mention that here i mean some Because cases if there is a people, malignant no 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 i mean you have to write more about the sens sensation on which core where na because there are different nerves which uh, subserve different parts and different kinds of uh, and was the patient complaining of that or on your no. uh, patient found out that the sensation when do you get a sensation less on the forehead which nerve is at fault what do you think what's happening there ma'am in my case patient did not complain of any sensory loss no, i did the examination that. why did you do the examination do you do routinely what do you think in your mind Huh. about the diminution of sen sensory sensation of the forehead or frontal area so in few cases if it's a malignant tumor which involves the bone or the nerves okay. then the sensation okay. will be diminished okay what They kind of malignant of tumor any specific malignant tumor you want to talk about ma'am bony uh, tumors uh, like Ma'am, in few cases, malignancies. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Bony malignancies. 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 Yes, ma'am. Bony Okay, gradually the swelling is of the mass. Mass, yes, sir. It may be because of compression, or it may be because of infiltration to the uh, orbital nerves. Yes. Uh, do you think it could be a corneal pain? You have a exposure keratopathy. Do you think it there is a lacrimation? There is so much of congestion. Uh, that may be do because think, of pain also. Do you think there is watering and pain? And do you think that is because the proptosis progressed and he is having gapping at closure in the night and developed exposure keratopathy and therefore presented to you because that was disturbing and not before that? Yes, ma'am. See, you must be able to water. Can you tell me? Can you list out all the structures in proptosis which can give rise to pain? because you have to learn to think in this way that uh, if there is pain the patient's complaint is pain what all could be at fault and what i should examine okay ma'am um, yeah so uh, where from what structures of pain are there are six or nine p's in assessment of the proptosis proptosis what is the very important is the pain pain and, yes then pain give you some clue about the diagnosis absolutely absolutely yes ma'am or at least what all you have to manage symptomatically because the pathology causing proptosis can affect other ocular functions which you need to protect correct yes ma'am yeah so proptosis management is trifold you don't allow the eyeball and its important structures uh, structures to be damaged you diagnose the case and you treat the case you treat the pathology Yes. at the same time protecting all the important ocular functions what are all the ocular functions which get affected by an orbital pathology in a case of proptosis um due to proptosis there may be if there is severe proptosis there may be lack of thalamus and inability to the close the eyes and that's so exposure to keratopathy very good like your case yes ma'am exposure keratopathy very and uh, while especially at night when the patient is sleeping then there will be opening of the eyelid so we have yes. to give eye ointment lacry gel very and good. lid taping very at the night very to good. protect very the good. cornea very and refreshers eye drops can be given in during the day time okay okay ma'am then ma'am after that if they can cause pain what else can cause what else ocular pathology can happen in the case of proptosis which can give rise to pain Okay, ma'am. Ma next, uh, due to optic nerve, if uh, optic nerve is involved, then that may be the, that may cause pain. Optic nerve uh, is not a sensory nerve; will not cause pain. If the 
apex of the it orbit is involved in top maxillary and mandibular division of the optic Man nerve suppose yes, the tumor mass lesion is as superior or inferior orbital fissure near that is orbital apex syndrome or but yes sir, orbital or apex patient may have been yes other other regions if there is a malignant tumor which can infiltrate these the other now sensory now see that can yes. also lead to the pain either pain. due to inflammation of the nerve due to infiltration infiltration bone destruction or yes. you can say directly compression these are the yes. three reasons of the pain in case of prosthesis yeah. and also a stasis orbitopathy also stasis orbitopathy yes. mainly most of the malignant most of the lesions will cause a disturbance in the drainage of the orbit because they mm. they occupy Venus the space which is limited in the bony compartment so they can have a you can get a compartment like syndrome where everything is tight and they get a stasis orbitopathy also a raised intraocular pressure can yes, present with pain yeah i have not seen really? anything you yeah. have to describe about the onset of the lesion whether it is a sudden onset progressive gradual onset uh, sub acute because you can classify the prognosis on that basis also In did you do a fat scan here joey fat scan Excuse me, ma'am. I couldn't get okay, it. Okay, okay. I I don't want to play um, speak in riddles. Did you look at the old photographs of the patient? Did you ask the patient to show photographs before two years or before that? No, ma'am. Is it relevant? Could not. Yes, ma'am. It is often, relevant. Quite often, if it is asymptomatic. Mobile photography. Yes, anything you can ask him to uh, get from his house school photographs as a child in some function it gives a lot of clues as to guiding you how long the lesion has been present which will guide you towards the probable diagnosis also yes ma'am go ahead and dr. i have jo dr johi if i can interrupt madam uh, dr yes, johi uh, dr johi see when you took the presentation case history of this particular patient you had a young uh, almost middle aged uh, male with proptosis pain and decrease in the vision before you examined the patient you should have in your mind what might be the possible causes in this case in this particular age group can you list some of the positive uh, the, the causes in this particular age group that is one thing second thing is when you present an history you know always you should make it a point to see that you don't use medical terminologies in the history of presenting complaints i think you used the word retro orbital i just noted it down that should not be you should tell there is pain in the back of the eye or something like that you should mention okay and second thing is in one of the presentation when you presented one of the slides with that uh, proptosis there you told on worms view there is proptosis in this case why is that why did you mention that uh, dr juhi on in okay sir yeah I, uh, Ruhi, Juhi, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Juhi. Okay. Juhi, yeah. sir. Juhi. Okay, okay. Yeah. So this like on, yeah. on inspection worms view. Can you, can you describe what is worms view? When do you use this worms view? Hmm. So when we suspect proptosis, then we ask the patient to elevate his chin, and from below we see. No, no. In the, this case, are you suspecting proptosis? Yes. This is obvious. It is already it is obvious. evident. It is obvious. So when do you use this worms view? So when we suspect proptosis, and you are in doubt, uh, minimal, yes. minimal proptosis, minimal proptosis. Yes, oh, it is very minimal to make out. Then you look at worms view on abscesses. Here it is evident. You don't have to go back to that worms view stuff here. And uh, in the another slide, sorry to interrupt. There is uh, you said no mark. In this photograph, there is a fullness, fullness yes. around the medial uh, orbit. And eyebrow is also eyebrow. pushed up. Eyebrow is so much pushed up. The eyebrow is pushed up. You must mention that in inspection. Widening of the superior sulcus. You must mention. Yes. Uh, Juhi also mentioned no mass. Am I correct? You mentioned no or orbital rim or something. Just go back. Go to the okay. slide. No. Next slide, please. Next slide or no, previous slide. slide. Palpation slide. Palpation slide, my dear. Yeah, you said no bony Bone. erosion and no mass. Uh, you did not feel yeah. a mass. And mass arising from the orbit, bony orbital rim. Actually, I wanted to mean yeah. that. There is a fullness, uh, and you can, can not insinuate the finger. And and the, you already told that there is a form 
I mean, there is no specific mass which comes from the rim, so I don't know whether no bony erosion is all right. But no mass from the orbital rim is a little superfluous. I don't think you need to mention that. No mass is, as such, specifically just from the rim, to my knowledge. I do. I will ask the others what they have feel about this. Doctor Ruhi, you can just mention that the orbital rim is palpable. There are no defects. I think. Huh. That is, that yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. No okay. defect, no tenderness. No tenderness. We can tenderness. also mention about the some bruit or some uh, suppose yes. uh, it is palpatory. Yeah, she mentioned auscultatory and palpatory. No, she mentioned bruit there. Yeah, correct. You did not talk about the mass anywhere, uh, Juhi. I'm a bit uh, wanting to know about the mass, not the rim. Okay, but deeper orbit you felt. Did you feel a mass and somewhere? The swelling was diffuse. So when I was yeah. Uh, you palpating. could not feel a mass in the or anterior orbit. Could, yes, ma'am. Uh, you could not feel. You could not feel. You only felt a retropulsion, firm retropulsion, but no mass in the anterior orbit anywhere. Am I correct? Superomedial quadrant, I felt a diffuse mass. The margin oh, was yes, not well defined. You must mention that somewhere. Yeah. Correct. All right. But hmm. you must mention that that there was a boggy, there was a fullness in boggy the swelling. Yes. Because uh, that gave you diagnosis, provisional diagnosis. Yes, absolutely. That is where you are going to look. No, if you have a mass, you must talk about it somewhere in the palpation. Okay, ma'am. Before coming to auscultation, you must mention about a mass. That I felt a mass uh, on slightly deeper palpation, whose margins and surface. Could you feel the surface? Surface you was said smooth. It was firm. You said it was firm and smooth. Yes, ma'am. So okay. Doctor Ruhi. Yes, sir. Uh, see, you to you have done a finger insinuation test, no? Yes, sir. Can you just tell me, describe how you did that? Sir, finger insinuation is, test is done by palpating below the bony orbital rim and the patient is asked to look to the opposite side and then the finger is insinuated between the mass and the uh, bony rim. Now, what did you feel, you tell me, in all the four quadrants, superiorly, inferiorly, medially and laterally in this case? Sir, I could insinuate my finger on all the quadrants. Except sir? superior medial. You <laughs> may have some difficulty. No, I doubt seeing the extent of proptosis, whether you are able to insinuate the finger and yes, the, so the supramedial yes. part. Okay. Now okay, we'll come sir. to the basic question. Uh, how many millimeter of insinuation you can do medially, superiorly, laterally, and uh, inferiorly? That is important. In a normal orbit. Normal person in a normal person. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's why I said this, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Normal actually value. Uh, see, you should, and you told you told the patient to look to one particular position when you did this. Um, yes, yes, you sir. should ask the patient to look straight head in the primary position. Try to insinuate the fingers and see. And uh, you can insinuate your fingers right now and you can see yourself. The amount of, um, uh, the how many millimeter you can see. You can see it is, you can, it is very obvious laterally and uh, inferiorly. The insinuation is more actually more, around okay. six millimeter. Medially and superiorly, it is less around four to four point five millimeter. Okay, yeah. and as basically, you should ask the patient to look straight ahead in the primary position. In a case where there is very minimal proptosis, where you suspect a very mild mass, if you don't ask the patient to look straight ahead, if you ask the patient to look up or down this side, that side, you can feel something when you do the finger insinuation test. You feel that something is hitting your little finger. That is called as a phantom tumor. Can you tell me what is the cause of this phantom tumor? There may be a deep seated mass. No, 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 no. No, it phantom is tumor. This is not a tumor, but it feels like a tumor. That's tumor. what Sir is asking. Yeah. What structure feels like a yeah. tumor? A That's what Sir wants to know. Can mimic a tumor. What is that structure? Your orbital septum. No, can you okay. might feel that orbital septum? Orbital septum. Which is stopped when the patient looks in the patient looks, the patient the looks straight ahead in the primary position. In your case, I feel you cannot insinuate the finger in the superior medial and in the medial side. That is my anywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So Agreed. Even laterally will be difficult because so much of proptosis is there. Laterally, in everywhere it will be difficult. Basically, the, 
in during your examination postgraduate examination we try to assess your clinical skills not your diagnosis we will not be happy with your diagnosis because obviously we know that you know what is that case um so basically your clinical skills are very important that is what we try to yes. assess actually okay oh, so you... that is one thing you should do and second thing is uh, okay uh, this uh, coming to diagnosis of minimal proptosis you told this uh, madam was telling about uh, that keston bomb rule test that nafziger test and other things can you do you know anything about that so nafziger test uh, that is also if uh, proptosis is suspected the examiner goes to the back side of the patient right. and patient, then the examiner will see now in normal patient we could see the supraorbital margin but in case of proptosis we will see the anterior corneal surface no, no, in proptosis no, no, no. you can see supraorbital margin the relation between the supraorbital margin and the eyelashes mm. or the anterior surface anterior of the surface. cornea between the two eyes is compared yes all right yes ma'am you can see supraorbital margin in both but you compare how much in front of the supraorbital margin are the eyelashes tip or the, or the surface of the surface anterior as the case may be as the case may be correct yes ma'am yeah the, these are methods to you know for minimal proptosis No, okay this was the you know if you know that custom bomb rule test you take a straight edge keep it uh-huh. on the superior and the lower orbital margin yes and if it just and touches the apex of the cornea the, the closed eyelids it means yes. it is normal minimal yes. it will just push elevate on one side elevate on one side yes. that is what you, yes. you should know and you, you can answer my first question jay dr ruhi uh, what are the causes when you just go back with your inspection sorry with your history part what are the causes in this particular age group 45 year old male, male with uh, this uh, proptosis hmm. what comes to your mind what it are the things a, you want it to... is not an acute proptosis it Put is on the top of your list what yes make causes? a list of differentials tell me the causes of proptosis in this case based upon your history say so it may be firstly uh, due to endocrine cause thyroid eye disease most common okay tad second second it may be due to any vascular lesion hemangioma no, no, don't tell any don't tell any you should be very specific Achha. don't vascular. give us multiple don't give us multiple choices sir no. no, you should give precise answers you'll get precise marks sir thyroid or vitopathy okay sir thyroid, thyroid or vitopathy it may be a non sorry spe- non specific inflammatory okay. disease or igg two or years, vitopathy two years two years history without uh, two years okay all right Uh, uh, that uh, Wegner's granulomatosis may also present any lymphoma or leukemia. Malignancy. Two years. Two years. You said two years. Yes. Ma'am. Had you seen the photographs, maybe you would have found it is more than two years also. Previous photographs, had you asked? Yeah. Mm. Suppose you, you, you can classify the tumor uh, or any mass lesion in our way in adult. according to laterality whether it is bilateral or unilateral then according to onset whether acute sub acute or chronic, chronic and thirdly according to anatomical location as in your case it is downward and outward so yes. you can localize it is not medially so no. it is like, you know like crimal gland mass so what are the structure comes in the superior medial yes. part you sub- just chronic. think about that whether benign or malignant or inflammatory Okay. it is very close to ethmoidal sinus so you Mucosil. can see although it is more common ethmoid, in children ethmoid frontal ethmoidal sinusitis frontal and sphenoid ethmoid also ethmoid, ethmoid also ethmoid. Ethmoid. and there may be also fibrom fibrous fibroma fibrous dysplasia or osteoma but he is a male osteoma. patient and osteomas don't present like this and there is no history otherwise there may be frontal mucosal post traumatic frontal mucosal or meningocele but that is not pulsatile so mm-hmm. you non pulsatile localize your diagnosis according to that way so it is a chronic number one adult superior medial compartment no history of fever okay mm-hmm. yes. slow growing or fast growing say so slowly progressive slow growing okay then what uh, just describe rest examination and describe your provisional diagnosis then go to the yeah. investigation based upon your you clinical provisional. clinical examination you tell see this is a case of eccentric proptosis with these findings my probable diagnosis is this or my probable future diagnosis is this you just tell us that 
you know don't go to the investigation no, no. Yeah. Oh. Okay. you can just tell that to us ah, yes the slide so this is a case of unilateral left sided non axial severe proptosis probably due to a mesenchymal tumor which involves both the extraconal and the intraconal space uh, dr johi there are three fold diagnostic uh, things in an orbit one is the anatomical like dr deepak sir was saying second is the probable uh, histopathology or the pathology causing third what you have written here is a totally histopathologic diagnosis which yeah. you cannot tell in the exam this is what your mm-hmm. pathology you cannot diagnose a mesenchymal tumor by a ct scan also you uh, can yes, just you tell can, the hounds field you unit whether it is solid tumor or cystic hounds field unit you can tell but not mesenchymal that is extremely pathologic you cannot give that as a in the exam you cannot present tell this no how will you tell you don't know anything you are saying that mesenchymal origin but it may be neurofibroma also it could yes. be schwannoma it schwannoma could be a schwannoma it could be anything you cannot really mm-hmm. narrow down to a mesenchymal or a teratoma it could be a deeper dermoid it could be a adult onset dermoid it could be anything you cannot tell yeah, a mesenchymal word is not to be used here it is you not to be used mention, at this stage in the case you can mention the hemangioma also because a uh, cavernous hemangioma absolutely absolutely, absolutely. you can have an hemangioma medial intraconal and now become uh, extraconal that is hemangioma is your second yes sir you should pass every case through the surgical sieve i do not know if you remember your surgery posting or what the surgical sieve is you do you remember yes ma'am after graduation taking surgical sieve yes sir first history taking then examination no no that is not the surgical sieve traumatic uh, congenital traumatic inflammatory infection infective ocular neoplastic and then that you apply to specific areas in the orbit like if it is lateral superior lateral it will be lacrimal gland most possibly superomedial from the neighboring sinuses mostly sinuses. so that you have to apply the surgical sieve and then the knowledge of the orbital anatomy applied anatomy of the orbit and the typical predilection of lesions to occur in the orbit and then give the diagnosis it is a mixture of everything that you have to do so sum up your case once just sum up your case then we'll yeah. you can get a better provisional diagnosis just sum it dr rohi yes you just tell the positive clinical okay patient. she has so, the case summary yeah. here yeah no, no, she's don't, no don't go to all this slide you can just tell by orally just only. tell in words what yes, what sir. you think are significant is a 46 46 46 years old male. old male presented with complaining of swelling and outer protrusion of eyeball since 2 years which is gradually increasing in size on examination non axial proptosis which was down and out with restricted extraocular movement mild lagophthalmos present best corrected visual acuity was 66 in right eye and 660 in left eye and impaired color vision on slit lamp examination left eye perilimbal congestion and exposure keratopathy in the cornea proptosis was 30 mm and 10 mm dystopia in the left eye uh, fundus examination showed disc margin blurred and edematous with retinochoroidal elevation so these Where? are the investigation which part which part of the cornea exposure where was the retinochoroidal evaluation you should mention that in your in, uh, findings where was the retinochoroidal le- mm-hmm. elevation so, so. in the okay you fundus can be before na that is ocular examination you can put the fundus findings before you do the um, imaging okay so there was a retinochoroidal elevation on I mean, the ill demarcated areas of retinochoroidal elevation more in the inferior quadrants inferior quadrants not in the superior ne- not in the superior nasal i would expect in superior nasal okay all right and the disc margin was blurred and edematous and tortuous vessel yeah, there was already optic nerve compromise from rapd you know that you will expect that and yes. your iop also you said 20 yes, okay ma'am. compared to 14 in the other eye uh, one more thing i wanted to tell you was uh, don't jump from right to left left to right eye first finish the eye in question and then talk about the other eye if it is not a bilateral complaint okay. all right yes ma'am. you don't have to always mention normalcy of the other eye Okay, okay okay first go to the eye in question complete everything about it and then talk about the other eye or if they ask you in between i mean i prefer it like that because i don't like to jump like that yeah. i agree it takes you, away dr. from Ruhi. the it yeah. takes away from the flow of the case dr rohi what madam telling is right what you should do 
you can just mention about first thing is the ocular examination right eye left eye you tell the patient has got left eye eccentric proptosis then you should come to the examination of proptosis under which what headings inspection palpation auscultation like that you can mention yes that, can, that is the way you should present so right now it is very difficult sometimes to uh, comprehend all your findings and all those things okay hmm. you can mention like that now you tell you summarize everything the based upon the positive findings what are you want to revise your uh, diagnosis or differential diagnosis so differential diagnosis no 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 you don't go to the slides at all you should tell orally just based okay. upon my findings you tell me what are all the possible lesions which can produce an eccentric proptosis like the case, what you are saying like this at this age group with this age group what if middle aged male two year duration proptosis with decrease in the vision and pain what are the causes so uh, if the direction of displacement is towards medially then i will suspect lacrimal gland pathology lacrimal gland tumor no, as well yes, yes, so lacrimal gland is situated superior temporally beta super temporal yes let us stick to only in only my case okay yes only your case yes. we are bothered only about your case <laughs> what will you put first on the list yeah. please tell us what will you put first on the list mm -hmm. by all your findings Ma'am, I will put a SOL in my space of occupying lesion in the superior medial quadrant. What are the common SOLs in the superior uh, superior medial quadrant? Ma'am, it uh, may be uh, due to any soft tissue swelling, or maybe a hemangioma, or maybe a lymphangioma. Yes. Um, all these frontal mucosal. Frontal mucosal is the first thing. Mucosal is the first thing you will go for. Okay. Frontoid is mucosal. Is your yeah. Frontoid is mucosal. The first diagnosis in my I would make a clinical diagnosis yeah. firstly of a mucosal. Frontoid is mucosal. You have, missed, you have missed the nose findings, which is very very. Uh, you should go for the anterior rhinoscopy and posterior rhinoscopy examination. This is very crucial to this case. Nasal yeah. examination. Just lift the tip of the nose with the torch, <laughs> also you can see some discharge. Sometimes if there is a sinusitis <laughs> or a mucosal like thing, you must see that that cannot be missed. Na sinus examination, nasal examination is mandatory in every case of proptosis. Systemic examination, all lymph nodes asking a history of any genital abnormalities is a must. Palpation of the abdomen is a must. The proptosis is the branch. I mean, the orbit is what links the general to ophthalmology to the general surgery. You have to do these examinations. Because of some of the systemic disease can lead to condition, and there may be orbital metastasis. Yes, yes, secondary so, to the orbit system. So you have to do that and mention negative if it is not there, but you must do it. You must complete your examination of no case of proptosis is complete without those. See in your list of differential diagnoses, you have yes, listed you it all wrong, wrong. One second thing is in the neoplastic category, you put frontal nasal mucosal. That is also wrong. Okay. Yes. So yes. that is not the not the way. Not See, not the way. First thing is you make a diagnosis of differential fronto ethmoidal mucosal. What is your? That second? is the first. That what is, is my second? first diagnosis. You pick up from this only. What is your second diagnosis? And your th thyroid eye disease should be on the bottom. Because bottom of the list. Yeah. Not axial. Not at the end of the list. No medical. Yes, cystic sarcosis you can put. Hydratis cyst you can put. Maybe any part of the orbital quadrant. Huh? Yes, sir. Lacrimal gland tumors also should not be on your list. Cavernous fistula. You mean carotico cavernous fistula? Yes, ma'am. Carotico cavernous fistula. There should be history of trauma. There should be pulsatile proptosis, but there is no pulsatile no. proptosis. Carotid. Then you must say carotico cavernous fistula. Hemangioma is a very pathologic diagnosis, so you can say a space occupying a mass which can arise from any structure. But first, what should be the mucosal? Second, an inflammation which is not very acute, like an inflammation or an infection, parasitic. Third, I would put a neoplasm uh, from oh, benign, benign tumor. Benign First there, of maybe. all, tell us: Do you think it's benign or malignant? Oh. It's a uh, um, benign. Okay. How will we confirm whether it is you... benign or malignant? Yes. Uh, I'm first. So first on the I will ask that on inspection and palpation, the bony rims were not eroded. Irregular mass. Irregular mass. Skin. There was no skin changes. 
Okay. And there was no history of any weight loss. Adherence to the skin. No. Yes, sir. But there was no skin can, changes. Then you go for some investigation to confirm whether it is malignant or benign. Which which investigation you will prefer? Sir, I will do an MRI scan. MRI uh, scan or CT scan? Because no scan MRI, you can't see the bony erosion. erosion. I want to bony erosion for CT scan. CT scan, very yes, good. Yes, sir. What, what, what do you do first? You see in CT scan. What are the findings you expect? Sir, on CT scan, I can see the extent of the mass. Very good. It's then localization. Localized. Whether it's benign, cystic. Well capsulated or irregular in irregular in mass, like lymphangioma. Yes. 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 And is there a city of this patient here? Can, uh, yeah. can we see yes. the CT scan? Can we see the CT scan? So since we suspected it a soft tissue tumor, so MRI was done in this patient. No, no. You May must have... go all, all proposes need CT scan, CT scan. to yes. see all the four, four bony wall. Even when benign tumor, you may get bony scalloping, not bony erosion, but bony there scalloping. may be bony scalloping also. Can you just show the image? You will get also the plan of the surgical the incisions, we do need a bony marker. We need to know what is happening in the bony orbit. We must have a CT. You can do MRI as a second imaging, but the first imaging must MRI, be a CT. If it is axial proposis, optic nerve mass, lesion, yes, only there is the optic nerve component. Need of the, but yes, you, you, MRI must be second choice. But second first choice. is the CT, 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 CT is compulsory. US. What, what, what was in the ultrasound, USG, Arbit? What was the, the USG B scan, vitreous was anechoic and posterior scleral wall was indented inwards. There was a lesion with homogeneous ecogenicity and it measured approximately 37 into 23 millimeter. Yes, big size. Tumor. Yes, sir. You think it is a cystic mass? Well, thickened wall and cystic. <laughs> Yes, sir. So the content say, was like fluid filled or maybe a. So was uh, it a dermoid? Was it a dermoid? It could be a deep orbital dermoid. We see many of them. You, Very you know, common. Third, third, third provisional diagnosis should be superior medial dermoid. Although yes. most common I site is superior yeah. temporal. Uh, yeah. But the third diagnosis must be dermoid. Huh? I've seen yes. inferior medial also, sir. Very bad case. Similar yeah. uh, proper. Yeah, inferior medial also. also. Huge one. Almost uh, bigger than the globe. The dermoid was bigger than the globe. And uh, you can keep this uh, orbital in okay, So the your MRI. The differential Three. diagnosis. Just show the MRI. Yeah. Yes. What seen in the T T1 and T2? Sir, in yeah. T1 MRI, axial scan shows hypointense signal which involves the retroorbital region. In this scan, optic nerve could not be delineated. And on T2 scan, you, you can look for coronal. In one film, you cannot see the optic no, no. nerve. You need serial films to see the optic nerve. In this one cut, you cannot see. You need serial cuts. Optic nerve, what is the dimension of the optic nerve diameter? Intraorbital is 25 millimeter. Not the length, not the length, the thickness or the width or the circumference. It is about um, 2.5 um, to 3 millimeter. 3 millimeters. So you order 2 mm -hmm. mm cuts. So only in 2 cuts you will see the optic nerve. You will not see them in all the all the cuts. So you cannot say optic nerve is not delineated by just putting one cut there, one slice there. You have to look at serial slices to make out where the optic nerve is involved or not. You cannot say cannot be delineated. This could be a no. inferior lesion or a superior one. You must be able to tell us serial slices. Um, I have seen my... I would. Uh, Taken picture of single, but I've seen other slices. Okay, so yes, you said then it's good. By, by, by seeing this MRI, Jui, yes, uh, what could be the lesion? Cystic or solid? Um, or cystic. Yes, because multi T2 multilobulated and the um, yes. hyperintense in T2 in water and WW2 yes. deaths. Then, then now your diagnosis according to clinical and radiological work. <laughs> Changes to what? What goes first? What comes second? You can change your diagnosis. Yes, sir. First, describe all cystic lesions. Okay. Even dermoid, even mucosal. Dermoid and mucosal. And so mucosal does yes, yes. look, uh, looking at the size um, yes. uh, and the uh, size site of origin. Yes, ma'am. Was the 
Was there any sort of trauma on the globe also? No, sir, no, no history no. of any trauma. Okay. You yes, can sir. Can you scroll this third one, third image, that sagittal view? Yes, show the sagittal view. Sir, this is the yes, yes, sagittal yes. section shows the look, uh, the uh, posterior scleral wall is indented and the mass indented. was located at and the superomedullary. And it is with the optic nerve also. You can see. Uh, you just enlarge it if it is possible. <coughs> the lateral section, you can say, yes, it, the optic nerve section with this. You can see that. You can see. Okay. Yes. This, is the scan. this again is maybe a little medial to the optic nerve. Maybe the optic nerve is not oh, there. I, I think but optic nerve and inferior rectus muscles are can be delineated. <laughs> But the Incident tumor mass is... rectus is delineated, yes. Yeah. But we, can, we, can, we cannot see the optic nerve here. Yeah, no, I cannot no, see the optic nerve. We are seeing the nose, all the uh, turbinates we are able to see. So maybe it's medial it's to the optic nerve. Maybe the cut uh, sagittal section is medial to the optic nerve. Okay. I think, Joey, you have demonstrated very well about all the radiological findings and other things. So we can move to the next after your differential diagnosis. Yeah, we'll do. According to we'll all do. the experts, you have to put cystic lesion first. That is the key point among the discussion. We yes. move further. further. So next, uh, the surgical excision was done by supratemporal orbitotomy and modified subbrow incision was given. After surface or bicularis dissection, superior rectus was secured and the mass was palpated. Blunt dissection was done by the fingers and surrounding structures and optic nerve was palpated. The orbital mass was excised and sent for pathology. Mass was, was excised in total? No, sir, not in total. Yes. Sir, so the mass could not be excised in total. It was a piecemeal surgery. Okay, you, you uh, aspirate the some fluid content and debulk it? And yes, then sir. Okay. yes, sir. What and common complication you can face in this case? Sir, uh, during uh, surgery, uh, sir, uh, this uh, superior oblique muscle could not be salvaged. Okay, that muscle was can be injured. Injured. First is the bleeding, orbital hemorrhage. Yes, sir. You, you did the uh, uh, local or uh, GA? Sir, under, under GA. GA. Under okay. GA. Okay. Ideally, such type of tumor should be operated under GA because anesthetist, anesthetist can provide you hypovolemic anesthesia. So, you can minimize the bleeding. Yes, sir. So then skin was closed and then French negative suction drain was kept and lid was closed by tarso. The contents of the cystic mass per operative was found to be some semi-solid yellowish color. Dermoid. What was the histopathological diagnosis? Sir, histopathological reports are awaiting. We have uh, done just uh, last week only. Sounds like okay. a dermoid from what Can you're you saying. Can you the grass, grass image of the mm -hmm. tissue? So that, uh, so that the image quality of the picture was not good. So I you didn't, didn't put it in the presentation. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. <coughs> Suppose it is a malignant tumor, then what you will do in this case? So then I will, uh, after histopathological examination, if it's a radiological tumor, I will send the patient for radio chemotherapy. If it's a radiosensitive or chemosensitive tumor, depending on that. Any other uh, uh, corollary to the pathologic examination you might need to do? Uh, sorry, ma'am, I could not any more, any more advanced pathologic examination of the okay. mass you were talking of? Yes, this type of mass. mass. In your case, any other... Biomarkers yes, that... Uh, yes, histopathological I mean, you know, so, you know, you know, markers are very important. Very important if you are not able to delineate the exact issue of origin or the exact type of malignancy because sometimes the chemo management may be different. Yes, ma'am. IHC markers. Yes, yes. You must know about it. I'm not going to ask you all the IHC markers here, but you must, for the exam, you must read all those also. And first thing, second thing you should tell about the uh, city guided FNAC. FNAC, city guided yeah. FNAC. Sure. So, city guided FNAC mainly if it's a deep tumor or the, since the tumor could be no, no, it is cystic mass lesion yes. and you can go for before the exercise. surgery 
Deep orbital biopsy is required in solid mass where the EP center is deeper. Yes, sir. Sometimes it's like lacrimal gland tumor. If it originating from the deeper part, lobe of the lacrimal gland, not... and superficial biopsy may be negative possibility. I think we congratulate Julie for wonderful yes. presentation. Absolutely. And what yes, uh, in the what the way she replied to most of the yes. questions from our experts. Yes. It's really a credit to her and his mentor, Asim Ghosh, sir. Sir, you did, you are really fantastic. One thing I can say yeah. that yeah. Your, yeah. you and your team is wonderful. Prasant, sir, your comment. Yeah. So, first and foremost, I think uh, I will, uh, everyone will agree. Nagarajun, sir, Modini, madam, mm -hmm. R.B. Maurya, sir. This girl was, is a valiant fighter like Didi <laughs> from West Bengal. Yes, definitely. <laughs> we <laughs> all applaud her definitely. first. Yeah, I think probably we Thank you. I want to thank you, Jui, for quite a feast of thought. <laughs> and uh, it was a good case for us to really hone our uh, mental muscles. Very good, very <laughs> good presentation. And mm -hmm. we all eagerly wait the histopathologic report. Yes, ma'am. Sure. I... Always, I feel, you know, my personal feeling about a case of proptosis is like a crime scene or a detective novel. And <laughs> detecting it step by step by the clues, by the imaging, by adding one more clue. I tell my students that you're all detectives and to get the get to the correct, you need to really think so much, <laughs> find every clue. So um, thank you for a very, I all love crime stories. So I'm very happy. <laughs> Dr. Gohi, uh, excellent presentation. A couple of tips, not only for you to all the postgraduates. Basically, this uh, tosis, uh, all these oculoplastic cases, whatever you get, they are all yes. uh, cases wherein you can get marks very easily. Yes. So, most of the time, the examiners know you know the diagnosis. We also know you know the diagnosis. Actually, this today's case, even we didn't know the diagnosis. Slowly, like Madam told her, it was just like an Agatha Christian novel. Towards then we came to know the culprit. So it was like this. So if, for all postgraduates, what I would like to uh, tell you is, is to stick to the basics. Do a thorough clinical examination. In the back of your mind, you document everything. Go step by step. Be very methodical in your presentation. And uh, everything will fit in pro properly. Don't try to unnecessarily put in some words which might not be required and um, get into problems. You elaborate a list of all the clinical positive findings. You tell uh, this based upon my historical uh, findings on my history, this is the probable diagnosis. Based upon my clinical examination, these are the probable diagnosis. So based upon my provisional diagnosis, I would like, or if you don't come to a proper provisional diagnosis, you can tell these are my differential diagnosis. Then you should tell that I would like to order these particular investigations. In this investigation, if I get these findings, these are the diagnosis. In this particular, if these investigations are negative, these are the, uh, this is my diagnosis. And uh, finally, you can, then the next step will be based on, uh, after the investigations are over, then we'll come to the approach to the patient, the management of the patient, surgical management or medical management, whether directly you have to go for the medical management or surgical management. Okay, and, yes. and surgical management, what is the uh, classical type? You should know all the types of approach to arbitotomy, everything you should know. Then the commonest complications of arbitotomy that you should know. Okay, and you should always know, you should not make, like Madam told that missing chemical tumor and all those things. So the, of course, the definitive diagnosis of any arbitral tumor is a histopathological diagnosis, but clinically you can tell, this is my probable diagnosis. In this case, what I particularly felt was you should have a list of five, six uh, clinical conditions which causes eccentric proptosis, which will push the globe yes. outwards and downwards. Okay. You can yes. tell, and uh, in the diagnosis, your diagnosis should be complete. See, what you could have told this RAPD, you didn't, even towards the end, you didn't uh, mention. Okay. You didn't uh, give an explanatory answer to that. You should have told this is a case of X. Uh, eccentric proptosis in the left eye with an immature cataract with exposure keratopathy with probable optic nerve compression that you could have told. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay.
very no. relevant points dr nagat i just want to make uh, one short comment here i first want to congratulate your mentors also for a case very well dealt with and we are as eagerly as them waiting for the histopathology like i said again the second thing <laughs> i want to tell you juhi and all other postgraduates who are listening i am not sure if my postgraduates are listening please revise your case sheet first 10 minutes finish forming a impression writing a rough case sheet then go to what you have diagnosed it as then you try to see if your history and other things are adding up to that diagnosis or not it is like mathematics you will get 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 10 only suppose you are not getting a 10 please see which two you have missed go back revise your case sheet so before you present to the examiner please present a revised version of the case sheet that is very important because when you second guess when you think yourself when you tackle first write a quick case sheet in 10 minutes don't just waste time measuring whether it's 30 mm or 20 29 mm 27 mm or 30 does make a difference whether it is 30 mm or 27 the diagnosis and the tumor is going to remain the same we are not going to say dermoid is cut off is 25 mm and something else 30 mm no so don't waste time on all these finer things when it is so evident revise your case sheet before you present it to the examiner first 10 minutes finish a quick thing then go in again uh, embroider your case sheet or garnish your dish before you present it and all cases of uh, orbit cases no uh, proptosis cases you get a lot of questions on thyroid orbitopathy so all yes. of you should read everything about thyroid orbitopathy and probably all the 28 clinical signs at least if you can enumerate around 10 signs of orbital orbitopathy also you can yeah. be good yeah. okay yes every unless oh. proved otherwise every case is thyroid in orbit bilateral or unilateral and let you have evidence to the contrary asim sir your few comments sir you are muted you are muted sir dada you are muted no can't hear thank you dr prashant and dr deepak for organizing such a wonderful this yeah. presentation for pg students and thanks to you for presenting a very complicated case it is not very simple orbital yeah. space occupying lesion yeah you can say the orbital space occupying mass lesion is always difficult to diagnose not only the general ophthalmology even to oculoplastic surgeon the structure is very small all the structure all the three germ layer structures are there and it is always connected with the brain and paranasal sinuses nasopharynx so it is very difficult to diagnose your level just by taking a proper history proper examination and with the help of radio imaging to conclude the diagnosis rest part is uh, dr mandal sir and dr asim <laughs> they will do the surgery or of <laughs> but your level just to confirm the diagnosis whether it is benign or malignant whether it is located intrac only or intrac only means central or eccentric huh? so you and then radio diagnosis whether any complication extending extent of the tumor whether it is a in, there is any intracranial extension you are a surrounding tumor like nasopharyngeal carcinoma or fibroma or any to reaching to the orbit as you know orbit is a no man lands earlier that it is just like a kashmir pakistan chain <laughs> photo learning all this say yes it is my area neuro surgeon says yes it is my area i will remove only tumor but nowadays orbito plastic surgeons they are doing all cases so mm, that was very good case and good initiation and almost you know most of the resident afraid from the orbital tumor and proptosis they always presenting the retina cases and lens <laughs> but presented very well and discussed each and every aspect congratulations to you ghosh sir doctor. please thank you dr prashant for uh, sir ghosh sir your comments Oh, can't hear you oh, sir is having lot of administrative responsibilities no, no, we can't hear you asim da sir your voice sir aap headphone nikal dijiye mandal bil ko mein headphone nikal do beta hello ha dada ab aa raha hai awaaz aa raha hai are you audible yes yeah, yeah, sir yes sir yes sir dheere <laughs> hello hello yes sir yes sir please sir, we can hear you sir we can hear you hello हेलो सर हेलो गुड इवनिंग दादा हां वी आर वेरी 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 प्राउड दैट यू आर जस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजिंग नाइस 
teaching programs for presentation of the uh, long cases for the uh, residents so it is a very definite uh, impetus for the students and all the teachers like myself because i am very much um, very busy so i have uh, a, i i have been gathered with some tips from nagarjun and also madam and uh, um, moria sir so that they to be helpful for our uh, examine batches to teach them uh, afterwards thank you very much thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir your comment last and dr prashant please sign me in for any more sessions like this enjoyed it thoroughly thank you madam you will always be part of us you all salil sir dr sir ma'am sir hello i am audible yeah. yes sir uh, uh, yes sir yes yes sir. actually uh, this is uh, actually this is a very difficult case i personally say absolutely uh, the lichal it's it, it is a, it, this sort of case should not be given in the exam uh, probably uh, the <laughs> yes. we are the patient is yes. comes to us uh, this is really difficult for the pg also because yes. uh, this uh, tumor is located at uh, such a area you must know the supramedial ear is the most dangerous area of the oculoplasty surgeon and uh, we are doing for the experimental surgery and to relieve the patient and uh, uh, probably simple case should be given in the exam not this type of case the well circumscribed uh, lesion uh, they should be explained uh, uh, clearly if it is this type of case so they should be difficult to diagnose uh, uh, by uh, imaging even i also feel that what is the actual diagnosis i am not sure about the diagnosis So whatever it's sir, that we would love to I... hear it. We would love to hear the diagnosis finally, sir. Please yeah. tell us. Uh, <laughs> After Actually, you get the histopathology, please tell us. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Because I, I, what I feel it the, uh, the, the area, the extent of tumor is huge. You know. Yes. Uh, so pl- yes. planning of in, uh, planning of incision is somewhat different than the yes. other approach. So I have to yes. modify the incision yes. and yes. enter it. During my uh, uh, procedure, you have to secure the all the muscle because the superior oblique, the superior yes. oblique are not cut. We have to hook up, and we give a finger dissection. That is the most important of these type of cases. It is not instrumental dissection at all. It will be a finger dissection. I do a piecemeal excision. That means uh, you have to press the tumor mass and save the optic nerve and remove that tumor mass from the incision line. that is my uh, uh, that is my way or approach and i don't know how much it is retained in the orbit the cerebus is the debulking yes i did debulking as much as possible to relieve the proptosis and to a patient have a good closure of the eyeball and uh, as possible the, when the vision is lost i don't know how much the optic nerve is compromised i don't know but uh, the patient is almost good i will give a negative suction drain no chance of optic nerve compression uh wait for the histopathology it's just three days gone uh wait for histopathology and then uh, treated accordingly uh thank you for uh, your ex- uh, all the examiner the, the, the <laughs> question they are asking Dr. if Peter, i if i have been <laughs> we, we want to listen to dr kasturi madam yes, yes ma'am yes she will summarize sir after yes, salil sir excellent presentation dr juhi dr uh mondol also congratulate uh, congratulations for a very beautifully done surgery but if you ask me the location of the tumor is superior medial so the basically three tumors are very common superior medial one is schwannoma because classically schwannoma i think modini madam was mentioning about this and also i think nagaraju sir was mentioning schwannoma usually arises from the supra trochlear nerve so the schwannoma is very common and the mri that she has shown it is very classic of schwannoma because it is hyper intense yeah in t1 and hyper intense in t2 uh, t2 and also the cystic changes cystic excavation so i think the first diagnosis is schwannoma second can be a dermoid dermoid yeah. will be hyper intense in t1 and the third is sft the solitary fibrous tumor because yes. superior medial is also very common for solitary fibrous tumor i am also very interested to know the diagnosis <laughs> the pathology the mri picture and the i mean location which is so classic for schwannoma 
I feel it goes in favor of Shonuma. So Dr. Mondal, you have done a very beautiful surgery. So congratulations, and Modini Madam, and Nagarajo sir, and Oshimda, it is so nice to see you here. And, <laughs> and Dr. Moria. Moria is always the master in any of the all with the tumor or trauma. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh, Thank it's you, time sir. for us to once more congratulate the, the young girl, the Johi, who really oh. valiantly, rather I should say, stood up against all the stalwarts in oculoplasty, I should say. And she deserves a big round of applause from all of us. All of us. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, I sincere most thanks to all the teachers, Dr. Modini, Madam, Dr. Maurya, sir, Dr. Uh, uh, Nagarjun, sir, for finding time for our young postgraduates and helping them and uh, telling them how what goes on in the brains of the examiners. So our next generation of students become more wiser when they really come to face the real exams. And of course, the mentors, Professor Asim, sir, and Dr. As Mandal, sir, thank you for uh, and, uh, getting your students so well and prepared. I should congratulate you as well um, because Joey's pre preparation was fantastic for her age. She's just a second year resident, but her preparation mm -hmm. and the way the confidence with she spoke speaks about the institutional culture and the uh, amount of knowledge she's gaining from that same place. So congratulations to the whole RIO Institute and all the externals once more. Thank you once more. So please do be part of our such endeavors for younger generations. We want to have a brighter generation in the future. And that is what the aim of our ARC, this uh, uh, team is, that we need to inculcate good and have good uh, future ophthalmologists. And this is what we are making a name. So thank you once more for sparing your time, valuable time for our young Turks. And uh, let's call it a day. Uh, we will meet students. Remember, we will be meeting again on the following uh, coming Thursday at 